artists and welcome back to my channel. My name is Margot Halleck and I am a commercial artist. And in today's video, I am so, so excited. I think this is like the most excited I've been for any video, uh, which is saying a lot. But today's video, I'm gonna take you step-by-step step through how I make one of my most signature point brush ballerinas. So without further ado, grab your paintbrushes, grab your uh, paints and let's dive right in. Okay, so let's start with finding inspiration. And I found this picture of a dancer, which is one of the fairies from Sleeping Beauty. And I'm actually gonna link the inspiration in the description in case anyone wants the direct source. Anyway, we're gonna sketch out our ballerina as a stick figure first. And that's always what I do with every single one of my figure drawings because um, breaking down complex elements to simple forms just makes the whole process so much easier. There's a link in the card above if anyone is interested in diving deeper into my technique for drawing people. But basically we work from top to bottom, starting with the head first and working our way down to the torso and extremities as we go. And right now we're not going into the nitty gritty of details. We're just figuring out proportions and the pose of our dancer using this simple stick figure format. For ballet dancers, it's all about C and S curves in the body. I like to have a bit of a curve in the upper body to accentuate that proud pose and the neckline of a ballerina. Now let's fill in the lines a little bit and add some volume. So once the stick figure is done, it's just all about adding these lines on either edges of that stick figure to give it more, I guess, a lack of better words, some more meat and more, um, I guess, volume to each one of those extremities. So I'm gonna do that for all aspects of this figure, going again from top to bottom, from the arms, all the way down to the calves and to the legs. And for the calves, I like to add a bit of a teardrop shape from the knee downwards towards the ankle. And speaking of elongated, I tend to elongate the limbs of my characters, and that's just an element of my style. So feel free to either do it the way I do, or if you want it to be more realistic to, um, you know, just vary your proportions so it's not so long. So coming back to this, now that we have the figure all set, I'm gonna erase the top part uh, or the hip area of my dancer, and that's where I'm gonna add the tutu. And that's essentially going to be a flattened oval that has some serrated or irregular marks along the bottom of it. So I recommend just starting with an oval and then just adding that detail once you're done and happy with that. So now let's add some more details throughout. So as you can see, we started with some very rough basic shapes at the beginning. And as we whittle it down, it's kind of like carving a sculpture. And once you have your general shapes down, then you can start building in the smaller details of it, like the fingers, the feet, and all other details that you wanna incorporate in your ballerina. So let me just add a little bit of a shadow underneath to ground her so she's not floating in the air. And we are done with our sketch. So now we're gonna move on to painting it. And before you start pulling out your paintbrushes, I recommend getting an eraser or a kneaded eraser and blotting your drawing to remove as much of the graphite or those pencil markings as you can so that your painting can stay nice and bright. So we're gonna start first by mixing in a skin tone. And I never clean my palette for the precise reason that all of my best skin tones actually come from a muddied palette. But if you don't actually have a used or muddied palette, then I would recommend getting a red as well as a brown. And depending on what skin tone you wanna to achieve, you can either lean a little bit more towards the red or a little bit more towards the brown. And so what we're gonna do here is do a very light, very feather light layer over the skin portions of the dancer as well as the bottom of the tutu. And even if that tutu is gonna become a different color, then I would still recommend adding that same skin tone color to that area as well. So let's bring that throughout the entire body from the top all the way down to the legs. All right, now that that's done, we're gonna mix a darker instance of that same color combination. So basically, if you did a red and a brown, just darken it a little bit, and we're gonna add some contouring and shading to help define the body and bring it more forward. So I'm adding it to the legs, but you can add it to the arms, the fingers, to the forearms, the chin is another good place for it, and adding another layer of this color to the bottom of the tutu as well. So the key to getting that beautiful, soft, jewel-like finish to your ballerina is by being patient and working in layers. I mean, you could get it done on one layer, but in my opinion, the layering is what gives it that airy and very delicate finish. 
So now I'm grabbing a bit of sepia or whatever dark brown you have going on on your palette. And we're gonna add yet another layer of shadows. And I'm coming in beneath the chin to add some definition there as well as um, maybe a little bit down the neck as well as the clavicle, underneath the arms. So again, here it's just adding a very tiny amount of that to some of the edges of your arms and extremities to be able to give it some more dimension. And I'm actually gonna add a little bit beneath the tutu as well to give it that sense of, again, being a shadow there of that tutu cast over the legs. Coming back to the torso and upper body real quick, I find that it's helpful to look at yourself in the mirror and see where some of these shadows naturally fall. Um, and most of the time it's wherever you have bones sticking out. So like your clavicle bones, your cheekbones, but also on the outer edges of a lot of forms. So on the outer edges of your arms and wherever shadows naturally fall. So now we're doing the point juice. And for these, you wanna take your darker skin tone mixture and not pink, which some would expect, um, and paint in the outer edges of the shoe leaving the middle of it white. And that white showing through to the paper will give your point shoes the illusion that it has that glossy satin finish. And the reason why we don't use pink or a color that sticks out too much is that in ballet, point shoes are really just supposed to disappear and be an extension of the line of the dancer's leg, not to stick out and be noticeable. So no matter what your skin tone, just mix up a slightly darker version of that and use that for your point shoes. So now we're gonna work on the uh, rest of the dress and the costume, which is always my favorite part. I just love this part. And so I'm flipping my palette around so you can see what I'm doing. And I'm gonna be mixing up a green for the costume of my dancer. And I'm actually incorporating a little bit of those skin tones into that mixture, which is something that I like to do to make sure that all the colors feel unified and the whole piece looks really harmonious and balanced. And so I'm starting with the bodice here and building in that green. And again here, I'm leaving a sliver of white so that you can see through to the paper and that'll give your bodice the illusion that it's sort of like a satiny reflective material, which is really pretty. And I also like to build in a lot of dark values, darker areas, as well as light ones. And that gives the whole piece contrast and a feeling of, you know, depth. So I think in watercolor in general, the key to making a really nice dimensional piece is building in a lot of contrast. So whether it's large and small, darker and lighter, saturated and duller. So wherever you can build in these contrasts, I think that makes for a much more interesting painting. So grabbing that green and watering it down a lot, um, I'm gonna bring in some of that green into the tutu. And again here, we're gonna build it up layer by layer. And that's what I love, especially for tutus, is being able to create that impression of lightness and airiness by, by all these different layers. So in a real tutu, the way it's made is with many layers of tulle all stacked one on top of the other. And so what's fun about this is that our watercolor layers are gonna be doing something similar with one layer peeking through under the next, which gives the whole thing this amazing fluffiness and dimensionality. So I've brought in some of that green from the main costume down to the bottom of that tutu. And I'm also incorporating that into some of the shadows. So it might seem very strange to be using green for shadows on the legs and on the arms, but as you'll soon see as this painting develops, using the same colors, I think I mentioned this before, throughout the whole thing just helps keep everything glued together and makes it look way more sophisticated than trying to do a paint by numbers thing where the skin is one color and then the costume is another color and everything is separate and not communicating with each other. So now let's keep working some of these green shadows here and there, just like how we did for the previous layers of skin tones. So now that my figure and the costume have more shadows and dark areas on it, I feel that my point shoes need to stand out a bit more. So what I'm doing now is mixing a darker instance of the skin tone color that I used for the point shoes. And I'm just going to add some shadows to the outer edges, leaving the middle white and paler in color. So you can really see that the satin is starting to look really shiny and realistic. Now let's add some ribbons and that's just gonna be a line across the ankle and then an X right underneath it. So it's really simple. Now I'm mixing some green with some brown and I'm going to do the hair. And again, you'll notice that I mixed some green into the brown. So again, I'm trying to create flow and unity in the whole thing. And as far as the hairstyle is concerned, it's always a bun and that can be either at the very top or the crown of the head or at the base of the neck. So it's really up to you where you wanna put it. And for me, I'm gonna put it at the crown of the head because that's sort of the more classical version of this hairstyle. 
Um, but again, it's up to you where you want to put it. And I think a nice detail also is to extend that color down to where behind the ears are. So that helps to keep it looking like a real haircut, not just like some sort of toupee that's been plopped on top of the person's head. So it's a nice little detail to have it there. And it, it can also extend into the chin a little bit. Again, building in that cohesion, building in that sense of unity to the whole thing. So right now I'm pretty happy with how she looks and I hope that you are too. Um, and so now we're going to start building in some fun details to the tutu. And here's where I want you to have fun with this because it's all about not necessarily being literal to your subject or to your reference images. And in fact, the more you can exaggerate things and bring in your own personal flair and style, the more it really comes alive in a way that's truly unique. So for my reference image, there are a bunch of overlapping petal shapes on the tutu. And what I wanna do is take that as my starting point and run with it. And mine is gonna be bigger than the reference pictures. And I wanna bring in some brownish gold tones too, because I think that it'll look nice. And I'm also thinking while I'm at it that I'm gonna bring in some bling bling into this because emerald green and gold just go so well together, like lamb and tuna fish as Borat likes to say. <laughs> Oh gosh, don't think too hard about that quote, artists. Let's keep going and keep decorating this beautiful tutu. Now we're gonna do the face. And what I like to do to get started with that is to create a center line down the middle of the circle that we created at the beginning of the drawing for the head. And we can use that center line to help us position the eyes, which for now are just elongated C curves. I'm doing it in pencil for now, just to get my bearings. And while I'm at it, I like to also use the pencil to create some added shadows to the rest of my drawing as well. So we're going a bit mixed media here and that just adds to the fun. Let's also add a small dot in the lower half of the face. Right now it's just for positioning. We can erase our lines once we start painting it. So you can relax a bit and not get too anxious about messing anything up. Once we're happy with that, and I am, we're gonna reach for the smallest brush that we have in our set. And mine happens to be a 12 over zero miniature brush, but whatever the smallest brush you have in your collection should be fine. As long as you have a round and sharper tip on it, that should work. So I'm gonna load up my brush with the same green brown mixture that I used for her hair. And I'm gonna create as thin of a line as I can along the bottom of each of the C curves I drew for her eyes. And that's gonna be for these very extra long, very feminine eyelashes. And that is it for the eyes. You know, it is that easy, honestly. <laughs> then we pick up some red for the lips. And this is gonna be the only time that I use a color that is outside this color palette. Now dab some red onto the dot that we drew to position her mouth, and then drag your brush down to create a C shape right underneath it. And that'll give her an extra pouty Angelina Jolie lip. This could be considered done at this point, but I'm gonna take it a step further and add some metallic touches to it, which will give it that extra wow factor. Basically, whatever you have in your arsenal will do, and I'm a huge advocate for using whatever art supplies that you have, not running around constantly chasing around for new materials. So if you have metallic watercolors or acrylics or heck, even glitter, nail polish, just go ahead and use that. As for me, I've grabbed some fluid acrylic from the brand Golden in a iridescent golden color. And I'm gonna put a drop of it on an area that is not my main mixing palette because one of the things with acrylics is that it does not necessarily mix very well with watercolors if you wanna reactivate those watercolors later. So I'm trying to keep this away from my main watercolor palette mixing area. So I'm gonna grab a brush and for this also, I like to keep my acrylic brushes separate. So I have a lesser quality set of brushes that I use specifically for acrylic details or acrylic work if I'm ever doing that. And so I'm gonna pick up some of this golden paint and I'm going to just apply it to some of the areas that I wanna add some visual interest to. And that's typically in a costume, it would be the neckline as well as some of the details in the tutu. And here the approach is very much like a less is more kind of thing. We don't wanna go in heavy handed with it and just put it everywhere. So I really suggest putting it in areas where there are darker values so that it pops. So here are the darker areas of the tutu. Um, I'm gonna add some a little bit to the this crown of the head. So I'm gonna create a little crown and maybe a little earring at the top so that ties in. 
And then I also like to water my metallic down a little bit. And I'm talking about a ratio of about 80% water to 20% metallic to give some areas a really faint, barely visible sparkle. And I also like to add this faint glitter effect to areas that may catch the light on stage. So a cheekbone, the clavicle bones, the tips of the fingers, the bottom frills of the tutu, and even extend it down just a tiny bit to the leg, as well as maybe a hint of it in the dancer's shadow as well. Speaking of shadows, to really ground her on the painting, I've watered down some of that green we were using, muddied it up a little more, and I'm adding a very light wash of it to one side of her, so she's looking like she's interacting with the background white of this page a bit more. And then I'm just gonna sign it, as I think so should you. And we are done with this beautiful, gorgeous, glittering ballerina painting. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments below what you thought and if maybe you're interested in tackling some other positions in ballet, things like what's known as arabesque or attitude, for example, which are also really gorgeous and very, very iconic poses for a ballerina. Uh, since, as I mentioned, this is my specialty. As always, thank you so much for watching and for joining me and I will see you next week. <laughs>